this. Boots, loving all the attention, ear scratches and sweet talk, laid on my stomach and started purring fast asleep. Cute. Oof. Boots, what's this smell? I said, <laughs> trying to dissipate the odour with my hand. What a farty butt will you have? Well, it says to eat the meal or get cut. Jake laughed. Yeah, fuck that. Before I could finish, the woman grabbed my arm and slid the knife along my lower arm and blood started dripping from my sleeve. Get needled, get dressed. And also and do mushrooms sick. because fantastic. <laughs> Welcome to episode, episode 50, 50 of Ghost Hands. We're back in the fucking pod box. We are back in the pod box. I don't know where I'm looking. Where we started. I feel like I'm blind. We're we back where we started. Yeah, but that's not because we've been sacked, fired, no. cancelled. No. We'd like to stress that Spotify have a wellness week and good for them. Yeah, you wellness, know? important. They we, however, um, have not taken a wellness no, week. No, we won't and we, we shan't. We never will take a wellness week no no my, matter what's happened if my whole family have been decapitated in a car accident i will still do the pod mm, thank you sorry I, mom no i really i really appreciate that dedication mm. i think um for us a wellness week is a day in soho farmhouse oh can we go back to soho farmhouse yeah. please mm. please please you need to get a gig in there in there in there you know because i did the gig when we, that's yeah. the only reason we got let in yeah, because you were doing a gig. Because you were doing a gig. So you, if you take anyone else on the day when you get a gig, yeah, I will never speak to you again, and it will make the pod very awkward. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it'll be. Tim, can you please tell Susie <laughs> to fuck off? <laughs> um, Tim actually fuck saw off. me do comedy last night. Uh, oh yeah, did you heckle think... Tim? No. Oh. I'm, I'm a good audience member. Yeah, you were. I got heckled big time there. Big Did you? Yeah. Well, it was a really pissed up GP in the front row. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, they were quite a trashy front row, weren't they? They're they trashy were. in Surbiton. We yeah. Were in the front, row. front row, but they were really lovely. No, they were nice. like they were going for it, but um. There were those two really drunk women at the very front. Yeah, I loved yeah. them. I had they a lovely were, time there, they but they were, they were they were they were you you like this and you're like oh gotta put yeah. that fire out over there. Yeah. yeah. But then when they like ah ha ha. I'm glad you didn't see me die on my ass because I think that would have made it really cringe if you were like, she is so bad yeah. at comedy. And you're ed like, can you imagine? That would be so awkward, wouldn't it? Yeah, and you'd have to do the like, I promise you that's not how I normally am. <laughs> no, no, it's just a one-off. I promise, I promise you I'm good. I'm killing it all the time. I'm really funny, except for last night. Yeah, except for last night where I just did a big poo on stage. Oh, my um, God. <laughs> so, oh, uh, and on that note, um, and I'm, I'm not going to talk about that because it's minging. What? There's a slight news story. Another news not another story. Not another one. I can't no, deal with it. It's not as like it's not. Oh, it kind of is that bad, but it's not that bad. No, I, if it's anything to do, we with talked it. about it on Huns After Dark this weekend on Patreon, and it was very disgusting. Vile. It was vile, or like you would have to go and jump off a bus. Okay, can I tell you about my journey in here? Mm. So I was on the tube, um, on the Vicky line, mm. and there was this lady with a cat and a bag. And I was like, oh, and I took my headphones off and I was like, oh, is, oh, is that a cat? And she went, yeah, very, very, very unwell. And then we had a Did chat. you look at a cat and go, is that a cat? Well, I couldn't quite tell, you know, it was it was all mesh. Oh, right. So I didn't, like, gerbil, rabbit. Is that cat? cat? Is that cat? Is that cat? <laughs> yeah, I did. Like you come from another fucking planet. Is that what they call cat? <laughs> well, she was thrilled and I could tell she wanted to chat. Mm. She was like, it is Jesus. And, Jesus? Uh, no, he is called Zeus. Oh, right. Jesus. Jesus. No, I have a piñata called Jesus. And of course you do. if anyone whacked it to try and get treasure out of its ass, I'd kill them. Treasure out of its ass? Yeah, or dollars. I want to stuff some dollars up its ass. <laughs> oh, so you've got. <laughs> so you know what's in Zeus? No, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus has dollars. You know in what's in it? It. Him. Him. You can't presume. No, well, you get no, Jesus. No. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. You can't. Has I'm with your not. Dollars. Don't say that. You have. Take it say. back. No. <laughs> there is no consent. Okay, listen. Jesus used to have dollars up its ass because mm. that's where the dollars were safe. Mm. And now. <laughs> can't so find you them. can't get any of your things out of. He's like a. He's like a pet and a piggy bank. 
Oh, he that's so. Him. It's like a tombola. Mm, it's cute. But if anyone went near him, yeah, I tried to get up his ass for his. I've pleasure. seen it. Now you mention it. I Rainbow didn't know coloured. such. Yeah, I didn't know such dirty things that happened to him in the past. I get really now it's a lot darker by than kids hitting pinatas. I'm like, leave it alone. Yeah, I think yeah. that's really barbaric. Um, is that to get their anger out on something that should? Well, like, I think be- historically they weren't always animal shaped. Oh. What were they whacking then? I don't know, just a bull. It's barbaric if you imagine it to be an actual unicorn. Yes, exactly. But yeah, exactly. Why? That's not the kids' fault. That's a, that's 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 society and manufacturers. And as we all know, society is the real. Horror. As we all know, these are the kinds of things that we tackle on the pod. <laughs> oh, anyway. On the pod. So, um, Zeus. Sorry, go um, on. We had a lovely chat, and then, um, and then she saw my tote bag, and she went. Oh, what are you doing for Halloween? And I just said, um, oh, well, I'm actually doing a show. I do a podcast and we're doing a Halloween show. And she was like, oh, my God, really? And then she, we started talking about Uncanny. And she was like, oh, my God, and that Miss Howard thing. And and I, she was like, do you believe in the Ouija board? And I was like, oh, well, I'm quite sceptical. I don't know. Like, I really want to believe. And she was like, me too. We, we had such a good chat. And it was all because she saw the Ghost Hunter tote bag, which I thought was really nice. We chatted about the, the sickly cat. I talked about Rocco the Pug. She Cute. talked about, you know. How fucking long were you on this tube for? It was the Vicky line, King's Cross to Vauxhall. Uh, was that far? Yeah, she got off at Victoria. Anyway, if she does listen to the Poor pod, woman. she'll probably listen to this stalked. whole bit and be like, that's a bit weird, you're talking this much about me. No, that's nice. That's nice. very nice. And who says Londoners are unfriendly on I the know. Tube? I think pets bond people. Yeah, I wouldn't have been do. like, is that cat? If yeah. you hadn't have had is a cat. That, is that cat? <laughs> I don't know why you've got no lip. Is, is that, that cat? cat? <laughs> Next time you see a cat. <laughs> is that cat? Next time you see a cat with an owner. But I don't want I want it to very obviously be a cat. <laughs> and I want you to go, is that cat? <laughs> and I want to know <laughs> what the response is. Ah, oh, uh, we're going to forget. We're not going to carve pumpkins after this. We're going on the lookout for cat. Is that cat? We're going to look for cat. <laughs> Do you know what's really weird? Oh. I have a cat story for today. Do you? Yeah, oh, all, that's it's exciting. It's all coming up cat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cat. Okay, you got a cat on your snow. As nose, long as witch. cat has consented. Um, I won't tell it right now because right now it's my turn to pick a tarot. Yes, it is your turn. I hate it when it's your turn because I feel really sad and left out. Mm. Um, that's for you. I'm so sorry. Pss, 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 okay. Oh, Adam recommended you for a gig, by the way. Oh, that's so nice of him. Yeah. For what gig? Some Ben Clover was doing. Oh, Ben Clover. Ben Clover. I was about to say something related to... Paid, that. those are. Paid gig. Where? Do you know, somewhere in like London. Isle of Wight. <laughs> A cat. <laughs> in Scotland. <laughs> yeah, it's in Liverpool. It's in the Hebrides. Why did I say Liverpool? That's uh, a accent. I'm dropping Liverpool. Oh, here he is. Um... How are you, Hannah? What's your latest? I'm well. Oh, you met the you met the baby. Oh, Hannah's nephew Freddie. Susie went and met the babe. Susie met the baby. Isn't he the cutest fucking baby? Yeah, your nephew's really cute. And I'm not like not that I'm not a kid person. I love my friends. But he's great. But he's just so you can't help. He's just a bit of fun. Energy and his enthusiasm. He's really happy and smiling. Also, he walks a bit like Ray Winston. Yeah, he's got a bit of swagger. He's like. He's just fun. Yeah, he's fun. He's a he's really a nice kid. He is. And, I, and um, as Millie said, your sister, his mum, mm. um, apparently he was like, you know, she was like, do you want to go see Hannah? Do you want to go see Nana? And then she, <sighs> and he was like, no, no. No, he said yes, but he wasn't that thrilled about it. No, he went, and, then, yeah. and then he went, and then she said, do you want to go see Susie? And he went, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> fucking raging. <about> it. <laughs> Absolutely I'm raging. Freddie's he's favourite now. He's so, he is he's going to forget about me. I'm yeah. Sad. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I uh, eh? Oi, you need I to know. Go. I want him back. I want him back. I've put in far too much effort oh. f- for him to be not like obsessed with me. Oh, he's so cute. No, Maybe you're trying cute. too hard. He has his. He has his. He's very fickle. Mm. He's very fickle. Mm-mm. It's whoever he doesn't see as much. Like when we were at swimming, he came running up to me and held my. Uh, leg and went no mummy because she was coming near him <laughs> she was like i quite wow. literally feed you and keep you alive <laughs> this bitch turns he up drunk that and really takes cute a swimming thing of like he he just puts both hands in the air for a hug oh, he goes, ah, to pick you off yeah to pick you off. It's oh so, he's the cutest yeah. and then you go love you freddie and goes stuff you oh my god he's very so it's not that i'm broody but i was like that is lovely no i'm not broody in the slightest i'm it's not just, broody for the rest of it 
Yeah, exactly. Like, like trying like, to get that kid to sit down and have something to eat is like, I can see my sister, she's got tears in her eyes. And also like, when I he, um, he got your eye, eye shadow palette <gasps> and smacked it to the floor. It just and went, like, doof. And I felt the pain. Imagine all, because all the kids get into the makeup bags of the parents, don't imagine. Mm. My Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. Oh, if you touch that. If some, if some little twat <laughs> came up and ripped apart my MAC lipsticks. Mm. They're about 30 quid. Yeah, it's a fucking joke, isn't it? Disgusting. Although, shout out to MAC, our new sponsor. No, I, oh, I I'd wouldn't love mind that. that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind, mind it. Is Anastasia Beverly Hills good? Because I've been meaning to try it out. Yeah, when I said it out loud, I actually lied. I don't have it. I have an okay. Urban Decay. So you lied. Yeah, I lied. Urban, urban Decay is... something about this pub box that makes me lie. <laughs> oh, really? I've, I've lied in here before. Have you? Yeah. Wow, oh, my that God, that made weird. me jump down. What was it? That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. Huh? <laughs> this pod box turns us into fucking mental... P- <laughs> that was weird. Huh? It's it like we're a fucking cat. pantomime. <laughs> It is cat. Anyway, no one wants to hear about our makeup. No again. one gives a no flying one cares about fuck. that. Okay, okay, I'm gonna pick a tarot and it's gonna set the theme of the podcast. Okay, let's go. I'm very excited. <gasps> what is it that's um, drawn your attention? You. To I that want one? this one. I want oh. this one. Not that one. I'm gonna have a look at that one though and see what it is because you nearly went for it. The Empress. We've had that before. <gasps> no, hang on. Jesus. Let me see you. Stunning. Okay, can I um, just to describe? There is a beautiful looking lady. She's got a gown on. She's got blonde hair. She's got a tiara. She's holding what looks like a big stick. I know. What's a that? big, a big butt plug. A big, a big sex. No, plug. it looks like a douche. Oh my god! And she sat on a throne with which has a red carpet on it. She's by a stream. I'd like Honestly. to make it very clear that I don't know what a douche is. Well, I do, but the only reason is because my friends... I thought douche is a verb, not a thing. It's two things, both things. You can douche oh and my you can God. have a douche. Hannah, listen to this. The Empress, this is so mean. I have to finish this before because I, I can't let my mum think that I, I use a douche. You what? Clean up your... I've only oh. ha- I've only ever... No, I only know what a douche is because my friends bought me one as a joke for Christmas. Uh, is it like one of those um, toilet suckers? You stick it up your bum. Stick it up your bum. Stick okay, are you ready? Up. This is so yeah. me. The Empress represents beauty, <gasps> nurturing, and abundance. That's so spot on. She is calm and content with her life. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the Empress indicates the need to relax. I do, you need, do need to relax. To relax. And allow things to happen naturally. Yes, this is amazing do. for me. You do need to. The Empress yeah. encourages connecting with one's more feminine traits and creates beauty. And I'm buying loads of beauty products oh, right now. Oh, yeah. I just signed up to Beauty Pie. What the fuck is Beauty fuck Pie? Fuck me. Beauty Pie is a subscription service which has skincare and beauty products. Oh, like. Um, 30 day free trial. Yeah. Like, Sign up to Beauty Pie. No. Is it like a, a, a Luke Fantastic box and all that? Yeah. Like it, they just send you a box of shit. A well, look fantastic. Don't do that. Yeah, they do. Do they? Yeah. I th- I just order skincare off them. No, they do boxes. Oh, they do boxes. This one is just a box of skincare and it's like a subscription. Service. Yeah, it's like the other ones. Beauty box and all them. Beauty pie. Um, artistic expression and connecting with nature are representative of the card. And that, honestly. <sighs> Let's see what you could have had. Oh. What is it? I didn't want it. Oh, I this didn't. indicates that you are an absolute minger. And <laughs> yeah, see, that's why you don't. You are far too relaxed and need to uh, work yourself to the bone. What is it? Was it? Don't know. Two two blokes. One of them looks a bit like Sarah Beanie in a dress. Oh uh, yeah, two blokes with a big flying line above them. Two are cups. Shall I look it up? Yeah, fuck it. Why not? Uh, Why not? We've got all the time in the world in this. It's a symbol of love of partnership between two people. <laughs> and I was like, not that. Nah. <laughs> the relationship is based on mutual feelings. No, but if it was on the, if it was about the pod, which it is. Yeah. It's not about us as people. It's about the pod. Yeah. I didn't want it. <laughs> I you don't want that. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want the relationship. You want the pod to be beautiful. Yeah, I do actually. It is. To be fair, look at that. That's Fucking the best piece of artwork I've ever seen in a in a, in a podcast. Can okay. I, can I kick us off with the cat story? Yeah, go Just for it. Just because it feels fitting. Cat. It is cat. Cat. 
Is it cut? Okay, hit me with it. I'm ready to go. Oh, it's so nice to be back here. Isn't it? Yeah. We love you, Spotify, but it's quite nice. Yeah, I do like I do like Spotify, but it feels a bit like um like I feel like I could just rip the walls down of this place and no one would give a shit. Are you ready? You know what I mean? I could just kick I could just like drop kick the ceiling and they'd be like, yeah, whatever. And just let the next person in. Like they wouldn't care. Yeah. Spotify are too precious about their equipment. <laughs> yeah. I agreed to check in on my friend's cat during her holidays. But Has it got a title? That's, I'm reading it out. Is that the title? Can you please let me read the title? Is this the title? Yes. That's already too long. I agreed to check in on my friend's cat during her holidays, but what I encountered made me flee in fear after just five days. Snappy. My friend and I have known each other since high school. We ended up going to the same college. We moved to the same neighbourhood and started working at the same place. It was all coincidental, but it allowed us to be close friends, even though we had nothing in common but life and coincidences. At one point, about four years ago, she changed jobs. First, we had regular lunches, but then I also moved out of the neighbourhood and into a house in the suburbs. So without daily interactions at work, without living close to each other, we just drifted apart. For a few years, we only talked on birthdays and major holidays, wishing each other well, updating each other on random life events. This year, for my birthday, she wrote to me and told me she's buying a house. Oh, oh. fuck off. Yeah, d- what you a don't flex. want that round robin, do you? Like, mm. Oh, hi. Congratulations. We haven't spoken in five years, but I've bought a house. <laughs> it's such shit news, isn't it? Hey, hey, do you know what? No one Bricks cares and apart cement. from the person who's buying. Absolutely. And the people that, like, they... Oh, I just, I just hate it. Yeah. Um, Again, coincidentally, it was very close to where I'd moved, about a 10 minutes drive. She invited me to her new house party and then messaged me after, thanking me for coming. A few days later, she messaged me again, and soon after, we started getting back in touch. As this was happening in mid-June, and with summer just around the corner, we didn't have time to see each other again before I went on holiday. But we were texting each other almost daily. She told me she got a cat and she sent me pictures. It was a gorgeous little rescue. She was black all over except for her paws, which were white. It looked like she was wearing shoes, so my friend named her Boots. Ginger all over and she had white paws. That's cute. Black. Oh, black paws. Black all over, white paws. Oh. Why, you're getting ginger because you're looking at my hair. No, I'm sure you said ginger. No. Tim, did you say ginger? I heard ginger as well. Yeah, you said ginger. You're both dead. You, uh, well, listen, this is the box you lie in. Well, no. So I don't we know. Can, we can fucking find out. I don't know. Listen back to the I podcast. can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, good. <laughs> she told me she got a cat and she sent me pictures. It was a gorgeous little rescue. She was black all over except for her paws, which were white. <laughs> fucking good. <laughs> she was black all over. <coughs> except- so she looks like half an Oreo. Sure. Just checking you didn't mean ginger. Just checking. Black? No. Of the cream? Like, what? <laughs> yeah, the cream no. at the bottom and then the black at the top. No, it looks like a black cat that's walked That's why I cake. said half an Oreo. 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 It's not Oreo. It's Oreo. Oreo. You're not American. Oreo. 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 Weirdo. <laughs> this is going to be another cantaloupe situation. Okay. From the pictures and videos... Boots was loving, cuddly, and sweet. Not a cat. Like me. A cat's not like that. Boots is? No. <clears throat> it's not a cat. No. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? Like, <laughs> was that like... <laughs> that was like a demonic meow. Well, I, I was getting a furball out. You? Let me meow. Yeah, you literally went... <gasps> meow! <laughs> So, when I came back from holiday, I didn't think twice before I agreed to stop by my friend's house every evening and look after the cat while she went on holiday for a week, too. I even proposed to take her over at my place, but (laughs) since I had a dog and my friend didn't know how Boots would react, we agreed that I'd just stop by every few nights for a few hours, as my schedule allowed it. As her flight was departing before mine would have landed, we didn't manage to meet and she couldn't give me her house keys, so she gave me the code to her garage... I could very easily enter like that. And the job was simple enough. Check that the cat had sufficient dry food available. Available. <laughs> available. 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 <clears throat> um, check that the cat had sufficient dry food available. Feed her a little satchel of wet food every evening. Change her water and clean her litter. Sorry, did you just... Can you hear in your earphones that it sounds like the noise that is behind our stories? You know the music that's behind us. I could hear it then in the earphones. Did you hear it? It's gone now. No. That was spooky. No. 
I think it was a train. Was it? Oh, it was weird. It's a train. Go on, then. Um, I was also to spend an hour or so just cuddling or playing with her. Simple and adorable, right? <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. The first night went smoothly enough. I got there around 8.30 and Boots is dinner time. She ate her wet food really well and then we played for a while. What's your favourite toy, Boots? I asked her jokingly. She looked me in the eyes, ran into the bedroom and came back with an orange plastic mouse. I was taken aback by the cat's ability to understand my question, but I assumed my friend was talking to her all the time and the phrase favourite toy in relation to that specific mouse had come by a few times. The cat was associating. I replaced the water and the dry food, cleaned the litter box and then lay down on her couch to read a little. <coughs> Boots came over and started making biscuits on the blanket. What? What? She, that's quite the feast, isn't it? <laughs> Not only is she a cat, but she's using a blanket as an oven. What? Making biscuits? Making biscuits on the is blanket. That, oh, when cats do that thing where they go... I think oh, is that what it I is? I think that's it. I would have never. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cat phrase. Boots came over and started making... You know you've got to... You know you're too far into the cat woman thing when you've got cat phrases. I don't have a cat. I just, I think that triggered a memory somewhere. No, I meant that this person. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make me laugh too much, honestly. I'm on the, I'm on the out of a cold. Okay. I think I'm on the in. It's awful. Yeah, it's been out. about three weeks now. Mm. So she was making biscuits. Boots is making biscuits. I took some pictures and sent them to my friend, who was pleased with my service. Boots, loving all the attention, ear scratches and sweet talk, laid on my stomach and started purring fast asleep. Cute. Oof. Boots, what's this smell? I said, <laughs> trying to dissipate the odour with my hand. What a farty butt hole you have. Excuse me, madam. What a farty butt hole you have, miss. Excuse me. Very unbecoming for a lady. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> that is awful. Like this person who's cat sitting is really weird. <laughs> if I was a cat, I'd be like, madam, fuck off. <laughs> I know, boots what do you like, mean? Fuck I bet bottle. it's not even boots. If it, imagine not even, imagine someone coming up to you. Imagine you're going to sleep with someone. Mm. And then they go, Oh, what a farty butthole you have. Yeah. I would get my belongings and, then and miss leave. At the end, it's all a bit. <sighs> mm, all right, matron. Uh, very unbecoming for a lady, I argued. The argued. cat. There's no one else fucking there. The cat meowed at me as if to excuse herself or protest and then got off the couch. Oh, come on, Bootsy, I didn't mean it. Fuck I off. Back. <laughs> I put my book down and checked the time. It was well past 11 pm, pretty late, I thought. I packed my things, messaged my friend that I was on my way and made sure the garage door was closed properly and off I went. The next night, things went just as smoothly with a very similar routine. A little bit of food, a little bit of play, some chilling on the couch. Boots again came to lie down on my chest and again that god awful smell. Aye, what's this? <laughs> Who's that, Boots? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Boots like, oh, this fucker's back. <coughs> Sniffing my asshole. <laughs> um, it says A-Y, aye. Aye. Aye, what's this? Maybe it's Hang on, well, hang on, hang on. Hmm. Has she gone back to the cat house? No, second night. Right. And then she comes back in, smells the smell, and she's now Scottish. Well, because it says A-Y, I just thought... Aye. 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 Aye, what's this? What's this fucking smell, you dirty bastard? You dirty kitty. You dirty, dirty fucking uh, feline. I, what's this? I reacted, trying to grab the cat and bring her closer to my nose to see where exactly it was coming from. I didn't know whether cats needed their anal glands checked. Like Jesus dogs. Christ! <laughs> this <laughs> woman is obsessed. <laughs> She's like, mm, with maybe anuses. I need to check the anal glands, and you're like, you don't need. What to. do you? What? And maybe what? The even cat's if just a bit stinky. Let, you wouldn't know what be. the fucking anal gland to do with an anal gland. Oh. Um, well, you would with your douche. I know. Maybe she needs a douche. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the cat. Maybe needs this story douche. is you. You can't douche a cat, though. That's got to be like our SPC. <laughs> yeah, that's on a douche. list. Yeah. Um, I didn't know whether cats needed their anal glands checked. Certainly like not by you, Susan, you prick. <laughs> but I was guessing this one might. 
But Boots, as elusive as any cat, ran away again, meowing at me from across the room. Fine, miss. I have to go anyway. Oh, yeah, because you're about, you're threatening to put things up his bum hole and look at his head. <laughs> if you told me you could have a look at my anal glands, I'd leave as well. Yeah, we're, we're team Boots, aren't we? Yeah, 100%. <clears throat> The third night is when things got weird. <laughs> I think Not it's... already? <laughs> yeah. That terrible smell hit me as soon as I entered the house. Oof. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hate that. What? When someone makes a noise like that at a bad smell. My mum does it and she goes, Fwa. <laughs> and it, Fwa. it makes me ill. The noise. Oof. Oh, oof. Like, oh, like saying it out loud. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like it's like the smell. Of, it's like the speech equivalent of that smell. Mm. Whoa. Oh, I don't mind oh, it. it. Doesn't I give you the ick like it does. Absolutely hate it. Um, oof! I exclaimed. Oh, okay, was sick. And quickly texted my friend to see whether it was okay to stop the wet food. It smelled strongly of sulphur, like when my French bulldog eats cheese. Something needed to be done. This is too, too graphic. I'd argued in the text. This poor cat's stomach needed some sort of managing. My friend asked me if the poop is okay in the litter box, and sure enough, it was. She suggested I reduce the portion, but not worry too much about it. Excuse me, sorry. What is, um, what's classed as poop being okay? Well, I guess if it's, like, splattered all over the place, like a fucking episode of Dexter... <laughs> Maybe the boots ain't well. It needs to be a number four but on the Bristol stool nice chart. Some nice little chunky pellets. Yeah, it needs to be. Uh, it needs to be on the stool chart for it to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What stool chart? That's the second time someone's told me about a stool chart. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a um it's a way of defining your feces. Someone told me about the snot chart, and this is disgusting. Actually, no, no, it's co- no, it's right. I, I used to work in healthcare, so well, don't eat. Why are you listening to our episode, our podcast? No, me? I think if you're eating right now, you go for it and don't get disgusted. We can't talk about this. Well, you don't, you didn't know what the Bristol stool chart was before recently. No, that's embarrassing. Last night, what that was embarrassing? Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> My friend asked me if the poop was okay in the litter box, and sure enough, it was. She suggested I reduce the portion, but not worry too much about it. Apparently, boots can get a little gassy when stressed. Relatable. I just opened the windows to air the place a little, <clears throat> making sure that boots didn't attempt to escape. Then, I proceeded to do the regular stuff. Change the water, top up the dry food, and then went to the lounge on the couch. This time, boots didn't join me. Instead, she stood across the room from me and just stared. For the whole time I was there, she just stared, her piercing green eyes never blinking. I felt the need to end my evening short, so at five minutes after ten, I bid Boots adieu and left. The whole way home, I kept thinking of the eerie feeling of Boots and me sitting in the darkness, her staring me down and me trying and failing to read. I wanted to check with my friend, but I didn't know how to put it in words. Your cat is creepy and stinks. Just sounded like a terrible thing to say to a pet owner. <laughs> yes. And to the pet. Dickhead. Stop being rude. I know. And also Boots is obviously staring this bitch down. It's like, you, you have called me a stinky little bitch. Yeah, you've called me a... You try to enter my butthole. Farty butthole. <laughs> like, you need to get out of this fucking house whilst my owner's on holiday. The other word that offends me is Trump. Oh, yeah, that's gross. Blech. Mm. Uh, Trumpy. Trumpy bum. <clears throat> uh, Arguably better than farty butthole, though. Yeah, I know. This, this, whoever this character is. Like, um, the next night, I got to the house. The place was completely dark, even though I always left the light in the staircase leading from the garage to upstairs. Oh, sorry. Even though I always left the light on in the staircase leading from the garage to upstairs, as well as the hallway light upstairs on. My first thought was that the fuse box had tripped, but when I flipped the light switch, it worked just fine. Strange, I thought. Not minding it too much, I went upstairs and tended to the cat's business. I also opened the windows as the sulphur smell persisted. This time, Boots did not greet me at the door. Instead, she was on the opposite side of the house, at the bottom of the stairs that led to the attic. Bootsy, dinner, I called at her, but she just stared back. Boots, come here. I tried again, walking towards her. As I started approaching her, Boots made her way up towards the attic. I didn't feel the need to follow her. All right, you know where your food is. You'll find me on the couch, I yelled from the bottom of the stairs. The house also felt unnaturally cold. I went to check the thermostat and sure enough, it dropped a few degrees. 
I texted my friend who just told me not to worry about it. I shrugged and went to the bedroom to look for a thicker blanket or duvet for myself in her wardrobe. As I was snooping around, I heard something right above me. My heart stopped. It sounded like tiny footsteps. Then I remembered that it was probably in the attic and that's Boots walking around, maybe chasing a rat or two. I know cats are supposed to be fantastic at being quiet and light on their feet, but Boots was a bit on the heavy side. Wow. Oh my God! Now we're fat shaming the cat. Now we're but now we are wow. we're body shaming. That's outrageous. Because Boots has got a few fucking pounds on her. Yeah. The poor thing's shitting everywhere. She needs to <laughs> eat more to keep up. No. Um, but Boots was a bit on the heavy side, and well, cats these days just don't have the same instincts as before. I assumed. <sighs> After finding a proper duvet, I made myself a hot tea and cuddled with a book on the couch. About 20 minutes later, Boots came back downstairs, moving around the couch. Come on, silly goose. I'm sorry I called you a stinky poo, I said. Looking and now a her. goose. Yeah. I'm a fucking cat. Uh, as if on command, she jumped up and I noticed something in her mouth. What's that, Bootsy? I asked her, trying to get closer to her. Fucking rat, in it? What do you have there? Now, I know you all call... I know. Now I I know you. Now I know all you cat owners anticipated what's coming next, but I did not expect it. Boots came slowly closer, and as I stretched out my hand, she placed a dead rat in it. I couldn't tell what it was at first, but the instant the realization hit me, I yelped so loudly and shuddered so violently that I yeeted the rat all the way across the room. Lo and behold, the little shit wasn't dead just stunned. The moment it hit the floor, it snapped awake and bolted. Boots followed in its tracks, but this time the rat was too fast and the cat couldn't quite catch it. It seemed like there was a rat hole in the kitchen somewhere and it managed to make its great escape, at least for now. I texted my friend the whole incident, suggesting that she might want to look for the hole and cover it up. Again, she replied, telling me simply not to worry about it. Well, if she wasn't concerned, I sure wouldn't be. She's a bit of an annoying person. She's like texting her about every oh, little she's thing. She's on holiday. She's away. Just let her fucking do Like, yeah, she's uh, like a sun lounger and like Magaloo. I know. Just let her. She's probably getting fingered all, yeah, like, all day. Yeah, let her. Let her. Let her. Let her. Let her. The cat and the rat and all oh. this shit. You like to write it down. Leave yeah, it just let her go and drink a jug of sangria and get off with yeah. a fucking Spanish waiter, for God's sake. <laughs> like we all want to. Yeah. In the meantime, Boots proceeded to eat her wet food and I went back to my book. After dinner, she came back to the couch and cuddled at my feet. The sulfur smell did not seem to leave her. Three more days and mummy's home, I told her, feeling bad for how stressful this must be for her to make her so gassy. She turned around and looked at me with her piercing green eyes. And just then, I heard some more footsteps above us. Boots got startled and her pupils dilated to the point the green in her eyes was a mere thin outline for the black pupils. Freaking rats, I told myself. But I knew better. Those were too heavy to be rat footsteps. I felt a strong urge to get out and I checked the time. Oh my God, it's almost 12, Bootsy, I must leave you. I said to her, grabbing my things in a rush. As I was walking towards the stairs that led to the garage, I could hear the stomping tracing my steps from above. Oh, sorry. <laughs> As I was walking towards the stairs that led to the garage, I could hear the stomping tracing my steps from above. So I rushed for the door, feeling immensely relieved when I was outside. The next night, I contemplated whether or not I should be going or not for a long time but I couldn't not go it didn't seem fair neither to the cat nor to my friend whom I'd promised uh, who'd I'd promised so I decided to reach a compromise myself go feed the cat clean the litter replace the water and leave then on a Saturday I could afford to go during the daytime and maybe that would feel less eerie and I could play with her for a longer time to make up for this day so I did exactly that or I attempted just to. taking this role very seriously I'd be like Got your food, got your water, you're alive, I'm out. Yeah. I know, but the, maybe the fear of, like, killing the cat. I think I'd be a bit like this. I'd be I like, just oh, would shit. not take any responsibility for it at all. I, but I, that's fine if you want me to come and feed it, but if it dies, it is not on me. Yeah. I think I'd get a bit nervous. Mm. Especially if Boots is lovely. Mm. She, well, God love her. God, God love her. She's got a lot of shit to put up with. It? <laughs> yeah. So I did exactly that, or attempted to at least. I got there. Boots was waiting for me like the first few nights. Hi, baby girl, I yeah. said as she rubbed herself against my legs and purred. I'm sorry, but this will be a short visit. Hi, Forty Bumhole. <laughs> yeah, Boots like, fucker. This time, the footsteps started very early into my visit. 
get in, feed the cat, get out. I told myself, stop, stop, stop. I could hear above me as I was preparing Boots' dinner. My fingers were shaking and I could feel my pulse increasing. Stomp, stomp. Here you go, I said, placing the food bowl down and trying my hardest to ignore whatever was going on in the attic. I went to the bathroom to clean the litter and the footsteps followed above me. Stomp, stomp, stomp. I went back to the kitchen to check if Boots had finished her food and to replace her water, but this time the footprints didn't follow. Instead, they seemed to be going in the opposite direction. Towards the stairs. This couldn't be good. My brain was trying to get me to move towards the stairs that led to the garage, but my gut feeling was telling me to look for salt. What? <laughs> my pasta was very tasty. <laughs> Let's feed the cow a lot of salt get the sodium in. Stomp, stomp, I could hear still further in the distance. I started opening cupboards and searching frantically for anything, plain salt, salt and pepper. Why? I think because, um, if it's a demon. No, this is insane. Mm, she's gone from zero to 100 pretty yeah, fast. Yeah, she has. Oh. Not it could be an intruder, but... Yeah. <laughs> what's, yeah. what's that not? Tis a demon. What's, Oh, tis a demon farty that's, butthole. That's a, that's a few footsteps. <laughs> Let's get the salt and the Bible. Well, fucking. She'd have to get a grater though as well, mm. wouldn't you? Imagine that. Like, it says here, look. Um, I started opening the cupboard searching. Plain salt, salt and pepper shaker, bag of salt, anything. I found a Himalayan salt grinder. <laughs> oh yeah, you need the grinder. Mm. And I started grinding it on the counter. I hoped it would be good enough. The stomping stopped. I too stopped grinding and held my breath so that I wouldn't disturb the stillness and soundlessness that fell upon my house. I shuddered. The steps were coming. Oh, down. is that the steps? Yeah. I had no doubt about it. I dragged whatever salt I could grind in my palm and made a run for the stairs, keeping my eyes closed at all times. As I reached the door and fumbled to find the doorknob in between squints, I noticed that the lights started flickering vigorously. The footsteps were now making their way down the hallway behind me. I started praying and throwing salt over my shoulder. I realised that I didn't know the words to our father in English and started crying as I Far. thought, Who art in heaven? Yeah, what, and didn't know them in English? <laughs> yeah, she knows them in... I don't know. <laughs> Let's find out. I thought she can say farty butthole in English. She should be able to say the Lord's Prayer as well. <laughs> Do you know the Lord's Prayer? Oh, but we've done this before, we've done this we? before. Yeah. 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 Um, I started crying as I fumbled to remember. Then I started praying in Latin. This oh, f oh, do you know what? St oh, I just, you know, I don't know in English, but I do. The only <laughs> way I can recite the Lord's Prayer is in fucking la Shove it up your arse. <laughs> your oh, anal gland. Yeah, get your anal gland and <laughs> shove your fucking nose into it, you knob. <laughs> I knew a little Latin since high school, and surprisingly enough, it came naturally to me. <sighs> Pater noster quies in caelis, sanctificeta nomen tuum. Stomp, stomp. Advenatis regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in caelo et in terra. Stomp, stomp. I could hear them picking up the pace, running at me. Pana nostrum quotidianum nadobis hodia dimitai nobis debita nostra. Stomp, stomp. And they stopped right behind me. Sicut et nos dimitimus debitoris nostris et ne nos ad in quas tentinotum. It's probably a thief that's gone upstairs to nick a TV and he's coming down like, what the fuck is This bitch is there with a salt grind. Wouldn't you drop the TV and be like, it's not worth it? She's she's I'd be like, she is mad. Yeah, of course. It's going to be some bloke in a pair of case with strainers and Audi. Yeah, exactly. Whilst Boots is like, go for it, mate. What a nutty <laughs> bitch. Um, I could feel cold breath down my neck. I could hear faint whispering that I couldn't understand. <laughs> a witch's cackle in the distance, said Liraba, nos amalo, amen. It's I like bed knobs and broomsticks, isn't it? I yelled, finishing my prayer and throwing all the salt I left. I had left behind me. The whispering stopped. The footsteps stopped. The house reverted to its natural state of quietness. Every now and then I could hear a car driving by. Meow. <laughs> F1. <laughs> yeah. Silverstone. <laughs> Get him to change the tires quick. <laughs> uh, I could see the headlights gently lighting up the room. I was certain whatever was behind me had vanished. 
I never turned around, I never looked. I opened the door to the basement slash garage, went downstairs, punched in the garage code and got outside. Once outside, I ran across the street. I contemplated running all the way home, but I glanced over my shoulder to the house. It seemed fine, dark, quiet. I started sobbing as I called my friend. She didn't reply. I texted her, but still nothing. I stopped going to the house. I figured Boots would be only alone for two days at this point, and I left her plenty of dry food. I was too scared of what could happen next. I would just explain it all to my friend, and if she didn't understand, then tough luck. I knew my friend was to land on Sunday at 7pm, so I went to the airport and waited for Why her. the fuck is there salt all over my floor? <laughs> yeah. Why's my TV gone? <laughs> <laughs> Why's my Where cat are my shitting itself trainers everywhere? Um... <coughs> <coughs> What are you doing here? She said as soon as she walked through the arrival gates. Well, I figured you'd need a drive home. Plus, I need to tell you something, I said, relaying the whole story and showing her photos I'd taken, even the ones I'd sent to her before. She listened quietly, and when I was done, she stopped dead in her tracks, looked me in the eyes, and grabbed my hands. Do you think I can stay with you tonight? She asked softly. No. <laughs> what? I asked, genuinely confused. You don't want to see if your cat's okay? Andy, these pictures are undeniably from my house, but I don't have a cat, she said, showing me her phone. Our last conversation on her phone was her thanking me for coming to the party months ago. Oh! Boots can text. But, oh my, okay. Fuck. I think, oh, okay, hang on. So the cat is a witch, the witch is a cat. So somebody's asked this woman to go to her house, but they know the code, yeah. the garage, whoever it is, and she's just been going to this woman's she's house. She's been lured to a witch's. Lured. Lured. Right, Hannah, what's your story for me, please? Today's story is called Don't Visit the Pop-Up Haunted House. I will. <laughs> I'd love that. Okay. okay. Do you see that? I drive by here all the time and I've never noticed that house before. My friend Mel was pointing at a grey building the size of a barn with no windows and only one big door. On top of the door was a sign written in red letters. Harry's Horror House. Oh. <laughs> we were driving by it on our way to a corn maze one town over. By the way, I would love to go to a corn maze. Yeah, I love a maze. Very Halloween-y. I wonder if we can find one to go today. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? We don't have time. Mm, no time. Got a pumpkin. Got a cover pumpkin. There was a small parking space in front of it, so I slowly came to a stop so I, we could take a closer look at it. Weird, it must be some kind of pop up, my other friend Jake said from the back seat. Well, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Mel started grinning. She was the biggest fan of haunted houses you'll ever meet. She'd been dragging me and Jake to multiple ones every year around Halloween, ever since we'd gotten too old for trick or treating. Except for last year when Mel's sister disappeared from home. All she left was a short goodbye letter. Susie was a year older than us. <laughs> she always is. Susie! She, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God love you. Susie was 20 years older than us. She graduated. <laughs> She's a no she girl. <laughs> She's an old farty bum hole. <laughs> <laughs> Say one thing about Susie. She's old and she farts. She's old and she gassy. I actually don't. You don't fart? I'm not very gassy. No, I'm lying. I do. Do you? I'm not very gassy at all. At all, at all. Really? What no. happens to you then? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just not. that. You know, some people fart loads. Yeah. No, I think I like to get it out there. Yeah. Eh. I just don't do it all that much. Yeah. Every now and again. Mm. I'll partake, but Let's not. Carry on. Okay. Uh, so she graduated a few months before disappearing. Their parents weren't really the caring kind and they never got along with Susie. She graduated and was old enough so, so it wasn't too odd that she wanted to leave. However, it was odd that she had completely broken off contact with her sister as well. Mel hadn't been the same since, so it was nice to see that this haunted house could spark some excitement in her. We immediately agreed to come back at night to check it out. You sure you're up for it, Rob? Jake jokes with a big grin on his face. I've never been the biggest fan of haunted houses. I absolutely cannot stand jump scares. And I don't see why anyone would enjoy the feeling of being surprised by some messed up creature. I also never trusted the actors in those houses. Who says a serial killer isn't hiding underneath them? It's a good point, isn't it? Mm, and also the actors are... Oh. 
They're some of the worst. Are they? Well, you know, it's like, oh, are you scared? And you're like, oh, no. Yeah, I know what you mean. I'd always, I've always really wanted to be off. one, though. I thought, what a good job. I think back in the day I did. I think I'd be pretty good at it. Drama school, but then I was like, I don't think I want to be in Have you not done it before? No. Really? Like the Thought Park, like, scare stuff. Yeah. No, I think I, um... I had an interview I think for I would have died once. inside a bit. I had an interview for one once. I was really excited. And I just know what. <laughs> what, to be one of the, like, actor yeah. scarers? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I, I just was really up for it, and it paid so well. Mm, I think but I was just really up for it. Job. Just, I thought it would be loads of fun. I think it maybe would have, because you were surrounded by, like, like-minded people. Yeah, and then, like, you, you get to just make people... I love making people jump. I think, I think the thing that made me ick about it was that there are always some people who will take that job very seriously, like they're at the National. Oh, yeah. And you're like, look, we're in Thought Park, and all these people are pissed. Yeah. No one actually cares if you're giving it your, your fucking Lady Macbeth here. Like, well, when I went to that Traitors... You know that Traitors event thing? Yeah. It was in the London Dungeons, and we went on a tour around the London. Mm. They've gotten very good. And we, um, you have to go through all the different parts to remember. Have you ever been in them? I haven't. It's like they've got Sweeney Todd and you go in there and there's loads of jump scares and things happen. You have to sit in barber's chairs and everything. And one of them was like the witch trials. And they had, I don't know how they fucking did it, but they put me in a cage. And like, I was sat there and it was all like thunder and light and everything was going dark. And then the lights went off for like three seconds, came back on, the woman had disappeared. Ooh. Went off, came back on, she was in the cage with me. I've got no idea how oh. they did it, it was terrifying. But then all the people that we were with are just like, they're just like celebrities, they're just like really uninterested. Yeah, it's so weird, really? like they're just the most, and they're a fucking pain in the arse as well because it's a big competition about who's, like who's funnier? Who's like more interesting? Um, it's just a big. I, it's not hell, something I enjoy. Yeah. So they all started getting the phones out and everything, and she kicked off. She was like, "Lights on!" Put the emergency light on. She was like, "Fuck this! I'm not doing it. You're all not of you are supposed to film." Yeah, kicks off. Really? Mm. Well, I get that. Like both. I do, but I was a bit like, like, I think you just need to just like tell them to stop it and then carry on. But she stormed out and wouldn't do it. Yeah. And then I was a bit like, well, you can tell them to stop. But you don't need to storm out. Yeah, and if they do the stop, job, then storm off. Like give them a Co chance. Completely, to stop. yeah. But they were very annoyed. Everyone, I, they were very annoyed. And I just thought then actually, I could do. You know, like when the the characters are speaking to them, mm. and they're always trying to give like a funny rapport. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. You're, this isn't like when you're doing comedy, and someone will try and respond with a really funny joke, and you're like, you're like this isn't about you. Yeah. It's about me. Mm. <laughs> it always is. Yeah. <laughs> and remember that. Okay. Now I've got that off my chest. Um, so, uh, you sure you're up for it, Rob? Jake jokes with a big with a big grin on his face. <laughs> with a big jizz on his face. Big, Jake's got a big jizz on his face. <laughs> Jake the jizz face. Jakey jizz face. Anyway. Um, oh, yeah, who says a serial killer isn't hiding anything? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I lied. Jake took the first steps towards the big door and I reluctantly followed. Mal squeezed my hand. Don't worry. You'll be fine, she whispered. As we opened the door, I expected to I expected some person to greet us and sell us tickets, but all we saw was a small room with a desk. The walls were grey and naked. There was no paint, no signs or anything. The entire room that hardly fit the three of us had nothing but that tiny desk and a door right next to it. On the desk, we found a piece of paper and a little cash box. Welcome to Harry's Horror House. I imagine that's the person, that's the person it sound. <laughs> you will see that this wonderful home is not quite that scary but rather welcoming and warm you will enjoy your time here however long you might stay all you need to do is follow the signs that lead you through it and we might see you at the end entrance free optional but preferred in metal mm -hmm. is that coins do you reckon optional jake asked and what do they mean by metal do we leave anything i shrugged Poly wouldn't follow Polly wouldn't follow up. Polly wouldn't follow up. Polly wouldn't Probably following some kind of theme, I guess, but I only have my card. At that point, I silently hoped we would just leave again. Well, it says optional, right? Jake said. I've got it, guys. Mal went through her wallet and got out a couple of coins. You were right. That's metal, right? They loudly fell into the metallic box and suddenly the door automatically opened. I swallowed. Jake grinned and Mal took a deep breath. Ready? She asked and only Jake nodded. Jake was the first one to walk in. Mal followed and I walked him last. Like I said, I absolutely despise jump scares and cheap horror. So I was expecting the worst as we got into the first dock room. Dock room. Dock room. 
Next, we got into the first dark room. After I cried. <laughs> that was visceral. <laughs> After I crossed the step, the door behind me automatically closed again. For a second, I couldn't see a thing, but slowly, multiple candles all around the room lit up, and parts of the room came into focus. We were standing in something that resembled a living room. In the middle of the room, a candle was placed on a small table. Behind it was a sofa that had sunflowers printed all over it. Another candle was hanging on an old cuckoo clock that showed the wrong time. I scanned the entire room for eyes or movement, any sign of another person, but there didn't seem to be anyone. I tried to get out my phone for some light, but realised that I had left it in the car. I also didn't ask my friends because I knew they loved these places and they wanted the real thing. Jake walked up to the table and sat down by the sofa, making himself at home. There's a letter on here, he said. I was wondering what they meant by following the signs. Maybe there's something on here. Mel sat down next to Jake. Is this an escape room? I thought it was a haunted house, I mumbled. Maybe it's both. Jake started reading out loud what was written on the paper. Welcome home, at least for one. Do everything right, and three might leave. What the hell? What's that supposed to mean? He asked after he was done. How do they know there's three of us? There's probably cameras outside, Jake whispered. That's kind of cool. But what do we do next, Mel asked. Does it have any other instructions? She grabbed a letter from Jake's hands and turned it around. Rob, come here. She scooched over and made some space for me on the sofa. Then she started reading the back side of the letter. <laughs> back side. <laughs> you are guests for now. Act as such. Afterward, move on to the next room. Okay, weird. Should we just move on to the next room? This one's kind of boring, Jake said. Mal shrugged. If you can find the door. Jake got up and grabbed the candle that was hanging next to the clock. Before he removed it, I noticed that the time on it had changed by two hours. There it is, he said at the corner of the room. Come on, guys. Mel stayed frozen and so did I. I preferred Jake taking a look first, just in case there was a jump scare waiting. Guests don't on open the door. And I'm going to start that again. Guests don't open the door! Who says that? An unfamiliar male voice spoke and I saw Jake slowly walking backward. A young man came through the door. He didn't appear much older than us and, had, and resembled a farmer with his denim pants. Again, trousers. <laughs> with his with his denim Y fronts. <laughs> he sounds sexy. Yeah. With his denim trousers and lumber back lumber back fuck me. <laughs> and lumberjack shirt. Lumber back, lumber back, lumber back. Lumber back, lumber back, lumber back shirt. Daily struggle. <laughs> oh god. Shana Paul. Shana Paul. The weird part was <laughs> fuck me. Lumber back shirt. The weird part that there was nothing particularly scary about it. He's wearing denim pants. Denim and trousers. A lumber back shirt. And a lumber back shirt, yeah. Lumberjack. Lumberjack. So literally just anything that met people wear nowadays. That is such a weird image I've got in my Why? head. Why? Like an Oh actually what I actually said. Like a flappy tartan sort of shirt. Lumber back. And, and literal speedos And little speedo that are denim. denim panties. <laughs> and also and I'm probably some a bit cowboy. Like River boots. Phoenix. Yeah. Being like, hey, and I'd be like... No, I imagine... Um, or like one of the lads from Stranger Things. I imagine, for some reason, and actually I know why, have you ever seen the X Factor early auditions? There's two lads that do a Peter Andre oh <laughs> thing, God. and it's the worst thing you've ever seen, but they think they're amazing. They do a, they do a Peter Andre uh, audition, and I can just imagine one of them doing that. Yeah. Because like they're white blokes, and one of them tries to do the other guy's... Oh, I think I remember this. Oh, one of them's got a what, yellow Fringe. shirt. And like, we're really good. We're yeah. really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I'll stop and stare at you. And he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what Love it, Lumberjack. <laughs> Lumberjack, back, back. <laughs> yeah, and the other, other one's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dead funny. You have to, if you haven't seen that listener, please uh, do go and um, look at it. Um, okay. So he came in, he's got his denim pants on and his lumberback shirt. The weird part was that there is nothing particularly scary about him, nor the story now. Mm -hmm. uh, normally the actors in these places have all sorts of bloody makeup or masks and they carry real looking weapons. This was just a regular guy, but there was something uncanny about him. Uncanny? Hashtag uncanny. Hashtag. What is it? What's that? I know what I saw. I know what I saw. Uh, TM, credit to Uncanny, please don't sue us. As he walked up to us where we were sitting, I noticed that he was holding a tray with teacups on it. 
There were two in total. Have a drink, he said. His eyes focused on Mel. Then his hand started shaking so much that the tray almost fell. But Mel had grabbed it just before it could. She took one of the cups and gave the other one to me. The cup was empty. Mel giggled awkwardly and clinked a cup with mine. Cheers, she whispered. The strange guy just stood there, watching us the entire time. All you could hear was his deep breathing. (laughs) That was wild. Okay, now I'm starting to get creeped out, Jake said. May we continue now? He jokingly asked the stranger who was still only looking at us. He slowly nodded, and so we got up and walked towards Jake. I turned around one more time and met the eyes of the stranger. I saw the fear in them as he whispered, Please, save me. The door closed behind us and again we found ourselves in the darkness. That was creepy, I said. Well, it's supposed to be. It's a haunted house, Mel left. No, I agree. This is a pop-up haunted house, is it? Pop-up, yeah. In the middle of nowhere? Middle of nowhere. No one's seen... Well, it's in their neighbourhood, I believe. Mm. But I've never seen it before. Um, No, I agree. This is weird, Jake said. That guy didn't even look scary and he still creeped me out. Suddenly the lights turned on. This time there weren't any candles but a big fluorescent light on the ceiling. We were in the kitchen. The white tiles on the floor were dirty and sticky. In front of us was a kitchen island. Behind it were the typical things such as an oven, a sink, a fridge. This time, the letter was glued to the fridge. Mal and I simultaneously walked up to it before I could start reading it. Another door opened. A woman with dark hair walked inside. She was wearing an apron and a white mask with holes in her mouth and eyes. That's fucking spooky, isn't it? Uh, mm Mm-hmm. She came closer and slowly tilted her head. First she stared at me and Mel, then her gaze moved to Jake. Mel grabbed my arm. This time she was trying, but this, this time not because she was trying to comfort me. I think she was starting to get freaked out. The woman with the mask stayed silent the entire time. And after a while, she slowly started shaking her head. Um, hello miss, can we move to the next room? Jake asked. The woman pointed towards the note on the fridge, which I'd forgotten. Mel grabbed it and started reading. A meal is waiting right inside. Take a bite and you will stay. Take none and you will be cut. I opened the fridge and dozens of fruit flies started flying out. On top of it was a big plate of rotten ham with maggots crawling all over it. The woman suddenly appeared behind me and pushed me forward. She took the plate with the ham outside and maggots started crawling up her arm. Then she placed it on the kitchen island and got a knife out of the drawer as well as three plates. This was some next level shit I'd never seen. I'd never seen real insects in one of these houses. What does that mean? What do you mean you've never seen insects inside a house? As in like in a haunted house simulation? Oh, yes, you're right. I was like, let me feel bad about like the fly that's just around my living room. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. She started slicing up the ham and I felt even more sick. There's no way in hell I'm eating that, Mel exclaimed. It's got to be fake, right? Jake came closer. The man with the mask cut up the first slice, put it on a plate and tried handing it to me. Um, no thank you, I mumbled. Well, it says to eat the meal or get cut, Jake laughed. Yeah, fuck that. Before I could finish, the woman grabbed my arm and slid the knife along my lower arm and blood started dripping from my sleeve. What the actual? This was real blood. I felt real pain. This couldn't be right. We never consented to any of that. I pulled my arm away and tried to grab the knife from the crazy woman. Jake ran over to help me when suddenly the door opened and a couple of new people walked inside. None of them were wearing masks, but all of them looked somehow messed up. Suddenly, arms grabbed me from all sides and before I knew what was happening, I was pushed through the door into a new room. I fell to my knees as the door closed shut and I sat in darkness. Jake? Mel? I shouted, but there was no answer. I couldn't see anything. My body was frozen. A few moments later, the door opened. I got back to my feet and caught a glimpse of my friends. Before I could act, the door was closed again. Rob? I heard Mal's voice as a hand grabbed mine and guided me through the darkness. All around me, I started hearing voices. Please, let me out. Save us. Take me home with you. We were trying to grab from all... We were trying... Arms were trying to grab a small side, but I kept fighting through. Finally, a door opened. As we passed the final door, I could see nothing in front of me, but I felt the cold of the night hitting my face, and I knew that we'd made it outside. I couldn't speak yet. My mind couldn't co- yet comprehend what had happened. We made it, Rob. Let's go. I heard Mal behind me. Slowly, my eyes adjusted to the darkness and I realised we were in front of the haunted house again. We'd come out the front door, which was impossible. 
the room we just left wasn't the entry we'd come in through, but the car was just in front of us. I unlocked it as I ran towards the driver's seat. I heard the steps of my friends quickly following. The door behind me opened and they jumped in. Let's go, Mel shouted and I hit the gas. My breathing was still heavy, but slowly relief washed over me until I took a look in the rearview mirror. First, I saw Mel. Her eyes were filled with tears and she was looking down, gently stroking the dark hair of a person lying on her lap. I came to a full stop. Mel, who's that on your lap? The person slowly lifted their body. When our eyes met, I couldn't believe myself. Susie? Her eyes were bloodshot. Susie? 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 Her eyes were bloodshot. Her face had lost all colour. She was dressed in an old skirt and a shirt as well as an apron. She was the woman in the kitchen. Oh, fuck. I I only got all shanky. Yeah, you got shanked. No, you did the shanking. I'm shanker. I'm so sorry, Rob. It was the only way to get her out. Mel cried. What was? Where's Jake? Yeah, where is Jake? They didn't answer. Shit, we need to turn around, I said, but I didn't dare to move. There's no way to get him out, Susie whispered. Harry will take him home. She didn't elaborate on that further. Is this a fucking joke? I'll call the police right now. Mal leaned over and put a hand on my shoulder. You can try, but that's what I did last year. It won't help. How? I don't understand. Mel, if this is some kind of fucking prank, I swear it's not. I don't understand it completely either. Mel looked at his sister. We went in last year with one of Susie's friends. He was the one who bought us the teacups in the beginning. Anyway, in the end, they cut me and I was outside. Susie and her friend didn't follow. I thought they were messing with me at first, but the next day, the house was gone and so were they. And then I received a letter. What kind of letter? It had instructions. I'm sorry, Rob, but it said to bring two souls who meant the most to me. It said I could exchange them and get my sister and her friend back. But why am I outside then? I promised you you'd be okay. I only needed Susie. The end. So she sold Jake up the garden Jake's park. gone, yeah. Jake's been sacrificed to yeah. get Susie back. To get Susie back, yeah. Yeah, you have to do anything in your power. We've got to get Susie, Susie back. back. We've got to get Susie Come on. back. Wow, but then Paul yeah. Jake was the sacrificial Jake lamb. Jake is sacrificial. Yeah, he's, he's gone. Done. Cut. <laughs> So that lad in the speedos and the lumber bump. Mm. <laughs> the lumber bump? He's still fucking around. That sounds like a dance move. <laughs> Gotta do the lumber bump. The lumber, I'll be the lumber do bump. the sprinkler. Now the lumber bump. <laughs> With your denim pants on. What do you think the lumber bump would look like? I think it'd be like one of them, you know, where you stand and you jump. Oh, I, you thought, go... I thought it'd be like limbo where you go under the... Oh, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. The lumber bump. I'll do the lumber bump. I'll do the lumber bump. I'll do the lumber bump. <laughs> but then... What's happened to that lad? Because he was there when Susie disappeared and he wants help. Yeah, but you doesn't matter. They, she only needed Susie. He's one of Harry's lackeys. One of Harry's like Yeah, everyone works for Harry. Fucking hell. What do you think of that then? <laughs> what do you think about that? Never I do love a haunted now. house though. Anything that happens in a haunted house, I'm fucking, I love it. Oh, don't even. I love it. I don't, okay, love I have to say... I used to do a lot more immersive, scary things back in the day when do you remember when, like everything immersive was like very on. Brand. What you used to get in uh, involved? Yeah, mm. like go to these little like shows in London. Like there was yeah. a place called um, it's not the Vaults. It was on Tooley Street, and it was like down this. It was called Shunt, and they oh god, it was fucking amazing. Honestly, you would love it. It was like you know where Tooley Street is. You know where those arches are in London Bridge, and you come out, and there's like yes, of course, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I yeah. think um, by the bus station. Yes, it's I really think, close to the yeah, bus station. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And as you come out of London Bridge, there was a tiny little door in the brick cave. Yeah, a tiny little door, and there was a little bouncer there, and it was called Shun. And you little go to bounce. these <laughs> little bouncer, little bouncer, hello, like, like Hobbitshire, and um. Hobbiton or whatever the fuck it is. Hobbitshire. Hobbitshire. And uh, and you'd go through and there was like candle lit caves for just, well, as far as the eye could see, little cubby Lovely. holes that were candle lit and it was like this this immersive kind of event. So you could go into one cave and there were just like um, headphones like this dangling from the ceiling and then you'd listen to something weird. You'd go to another room, there was just a woman like on a plinth in a bath just blowing bubbles everywhere. You'd go into another room, there was a little bar with candles. All no, around. this sounds like shitty oh, gallery like, stuff. Oh, it was amazing. But was you know it? when you're like, yeah. Was and it I was scary? Like, Mm, it was a bit unnerving and I was like 19 and I was like oh my god this is like I thought it was the coolest thing mm. ever but then I'd never been to something like that if anyone knows of anything that's similar to that I'd love to go 
I went to one in the, you know, like the old shipping containers yeah. in like Greenwich. It was called Heartbreak Hotel, I think, and it was. Oh really yeah, 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 weird. yeah. Did you enjoy it? It was good, but it was, it was. Do you know what they they? I, I completely understand that this thing is people's art. I understand art. that, whatever. But I don't. I'm not like, oh yeah, what anime? Like I want to go and be entertained. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same with like comedy or anything like that. I'm like, oh, do you know what? I haven't got a point to this. Yeah. I just want to go and enter and I want to be entertained. So I would rather go to somewhere like Scarefest to get chased by clowns. Well, cuz that's a bit more scary. That's what I want. I want the scare. Yeah. I don't really want to appreciate a woman in a bath on a on a rock. Well, I think that was less aimed to be like scare. It was more like setting the atmosphere so that if you had a drink there you'd be like this is so Oh yeah, weird. I can understand cool. it. I can understand, but I I just don't understand their point. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then it kind of loses it. But I feel thing. like there weren't enough or there aren't enough like scary immersive. Maybe events. we should put one on. Because I agree with you. I'm like I want a mix between a really yeah. eerie atmosphere. Yeah. You go in, you don't you're a bit unnerved, but you're not quite sure what's going on. Yeah. You maybe have a drink at a lovely little candlelit bar and then it starts to get weirder and weirder. Like, yeah. like we should basically do an immersive haunted house. <gasps> oh my god, I fucking love that. Wouldn't it be great? Like the go <laughs> Just kissed the microphone. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would love to create one. Yeah, because I think there's not enough jump scares in the world. No, there's not. And I love Films can do it, but I, w I want something live. Like yeah, when, live... at the moment when you try, I went to the one in Blackpool, have you ever done that? What's that? Fuck me. I ran, I, I lost a flip flop in there what? and I've never got it back. What were you chased by zombies? I was chased by uh, Michael Myers. No, sorry. The, I was chased by, I think it was the Chainsaw Massacre bloke. It was, r um... it was app, it was like, it was tacky. It was. You know, it was all blood and gore, in it, but it was so fun. The Exorcist was there. That was loads of fun. Her, yeah. that Reagan woman. Oh, it was brilliant. If you can go. And outside while you were queuing up, because we were probably about 16, outside while we were queuing up, they had um, like all these like fake newspaper articles that are like, seven die in the Blackpool haunted house <laughs> from a heart attack because it is so scary. Did and we're like, oh my God, this is real. No, this is real. This is real. <laughs> When you got chased, were you not like, what if you just stop? Yeah, I mean, or do you go? You all, the, all, the other fun thing is that you ran out into a pub. So mm. people would go and sit in this pub Fun. and get pissed and just kept watching people like running out. Oh, there. I love Which that. Which is an impeccable business idea. <laughs> impeccable. Isn't it? Mm, yeah. And you'd feel like a twat as well, but I, did, I just kept running. And that's what I want. I want some like tongue in cheek. You yeah. end up in a pub. Everyone's having a bit of a laugh. And like a comforting scare. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Okay. Well, I think we've just created a new business. So Can't well wait. done, us. Okay. Should I tell you a story? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know what you got for me. I'm just going to tell you a few little, uh, a few little urban legends. Do you know where Bloody Mary came from? Because it is Halloween tomorrow. So I'm getting. I'm, getting um, very, I'm feeling spooky. Yeah, go on. Uh, Bloody Mary was known for killing young women and bathing in their blood as a way to maintain her youth. We're not past that. Wow. I would do that. Oh, 100%. I tell you who we can kill, that woman who said that you're fucking, te said that she's 10 years younger than you. Oh, yeah. Slag. 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 <laughs> and we're reclaiming the word slag. I'm not using it as a slag. slag. <laughs> I'm reclaiming it. You know, like we've done bitch. You know, if we re we've reclaimed bitch. bitch. I'm going to reclaim slag as well. Because mm. I'm sick of not being able to say it. It's a funny word. Yeah, I know what you like, mean. Like, slut's not a very nice word. Slag's a wonderful Slag's word. great. Slag. It just conjures up, like, a sh short skirt outside the back of a pub, like, smoking a cigarette and having a, yeah. having a snake bite. Mm. Like, that I've done. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, she used to kill young women and bathe in the blood as a way of maintaining her youth. The gruesome story is a favourite tale at sleepovers. Uh, and then they would do the whole Bloody Mary thing. Um, at one, the first time this was done, they saw a shadow moving behind them. But before they could turn around, the frightening bloody face of a woman flashed in the mirror. The girl streamed in terror and ran away. That is mm. the thing. Raises that. It's not very hard. Oh, I love this. After leaving a friend's Halloween party, a boyfriend and girlfriend decided to drive the short distance to a favourite lake park. Lake park? It's an American thing, I'm sure. The teenagers arrived at the spot to find it vacant. It was a beautiful romantic setting with a full moon shimmering on the water. The boy scrolled through his playlist to find the perfect music. 
when both of their phones beeped with a police alert warning for everyone to be on the lookout for a man with a prosthetic hook who was seen fleeing the scene of a murder. The two teenagers realised the address of the murder scene was only a couple of blocks from where they'd parked. They decided to leave the park, but when they tried to start the car, the engine wouldn't turn over. They tried several times and finally the engine coughed to life and they sped out of the park. They talked about their Halloween not ending quite the way they'd wanted. The girlfriend suggests they go back to the house to watch a scary movie. When they arrived at her house, they parked behind the driveway. They parked in the driveway behind a parent's car. The girlfriend got out, turned back to wait for her boyfriend, and hanging from the car door was a prosthetic hook. Oy. Love that. Um, this is another favourite of mine. Uh, this is a classic. But I feel like I'm going to have to read it because Halloween tomorrow and I love it. Um, Late on Halloween, a nurse driving home from work late, she noticed a car that seemed to be following her. The driver began sporadically flashing the beams. The nurse sped up, the car sped up behind her. She called 911 and told the police that someone was chasing her. The dispatcher told her to stop the car, get out of it immediately. The nurse thought the dispatcher had lost her mind, but then a police car pulled up in front of her, forcing her to stop. The dispatcher... <laughs> the dispatcher told her once more to get out and go to the police. She emerged from the car and one of the police officers told her to get in the back seat. The nurse didn't know what to expect. All kinds of thoughts raced through her mind. The first police officer walked towards the driver's side of her car and the other moved around the passenger side, stood with their guns and flashlights aimed at the back seat. Oh, our worst. The nurse watched as the police officers dragged a man from the back of the seat. She later discovered the car flashing its lights was a woman who'd noticed the man rise up from the back seat holding up a knife. Uh, Each time the man rose up, she flashed her lights. Oh my Isn't God. Isn't that fucking grim? That is grim. Um, okay, do you want one more, little yes, one? Yes, 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 yes. Um, Maria La Llorona is the woman, the wailing woman in uh, white. Yeah, La Llorona. La Llorona. She fell into a jealous rage when she discovered her husband was having an affair. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. She went insane from anger and jealousy and pushed her children into a raging river. Oh, we don't really condone that. The young children drowned in the bitter cold waters. The ghost of La Llorona wanders the riverbanks on Halloween in search of her children. I pick a lane. La Llorona. Yeah. You killed them. <laughs> You can hear her wailing cries riding over the river waters. She is seen dressed in white as she searches for her lost children. Her gut-wrenching cries are those of a soul... <coughs> her gut-wrenching cries are those of a soul condemned for killing her own children. Those who see her will suffer a similar fate as her children. Parents are warned to keep their kids away from the rivers of Halloween or the Lalarona will take them for her own. Oh, she's quite a big deal, actually. She is. She's like top tier in the Halloween world. <clears throat> this is called A Walk Home on Halloween. I just moved to my current flat in Rains Park, southwest London, and I was still fairly unfamiliar with the area. Not me. I don't know it. You know Do it? You? you know Rains Park? Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, it's a bit Wimbledon y, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. I don't go to Wimbledon mm. often. Mm. Right. Now, my current bosses and supervisors know that I'm still fighting a losing battle with the underwhelming reliability of Southwest trains. Hallelujah. They're the worst. This is the true horror story. It is. They are the worst. We've tackled society, the patriarchy, and now, thank God, Southwest the train lines. The trains just, just a shambles. And as a result, I have less than reliable timekeeping when it comes to arriving to work on time. A battle I'd hoped to circumvent with the purchase of a bicycle. Sadly though, all too often the London weather and my inherent idleness jointly conspire to once again force me to take the train. This person sounds like work. the most basic London bitch. Yeah, but you kind of get it. I'm like, yeah, get no, a bike. Get a bike. Like, can't be asked to use it. Um, while some people are more than aware that the trains keep me from arriving at work on time, not many of you are aware of the troubles I have returning home. That is to say, I have many a time found myself stuck at Clapham Junction oh. with no train to take me back uh, to Rains Park. Yeah, that Clapham Junction train is an absolute oh. nightmare. Oh, Clappy J. It's like it's like the fucking the ghost trains. Mm. They just never arrive. Anyway. Um, in these circumstances, I have to take a bus to Wimbledon Common and walk the remaining three miles on foot. It's actually quite a pleasant walk. London doesn't have many hills, and if I walk along the Ridgeway, you can actually occasionally catch a nice view. True, it is of Croydon, 
But this is like reading out loud Google Maps. <laughs> I know. I'm like, no, I'm there. I, I'm, I'm, usually our stories are American. Yes, like, that's true. I actually. quite like that I'm here in Croydon yes. being brought up. Yes. Croydon is fucking terrifying. Oh, it's grim. Um, but we're not going to be salubrious and slag off. I was just um, going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> we, had, we had a comment on um, our lovely Hunsnet episode, which was like, oh, these these girls with uh, education. I know. Talking about places like, you know, looking like, down. Like, I'm from Stoke Contract. Susie's from Ealing. <laughs> it's not like you're from, like, not that Ealing's a shit out, but it's not like. Yeah, I know. I it's not like we went to Cambridge University. Yeah, I think they got the wrong end of the stick. They just thought we were like trashing poor areas of the UK. Yeah, but I'm from a poor area of the UK. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they were because like, we kept bringing up Telford. Yeah, but listen, each to their own. Yeah, it sure. wasn't. For well, them. no, not each to you. Fuck yeah, off, whatever you are. Go away to the sea. Um, <laughs> now, to call Wimbledon Village a privileged area would be an understatement. The driveways are home to sports cars. Are and they? Yeah, it's Wimbledon How Village. Is it? Oh, I've never. Spenny. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's where. It's very posh. They've got a Gales. They've got an Ivy. Oh, I hate Gales. Oh. It's the worst. You know what? I hate gales, but <coughs> I love, 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 love their tahini bites. <gasps> oh, I've had one. They are so delicious. I think their coffee is shit as well. Yeah, it's so overpriced, though. Yeah, it makes me a bit sick. Okay. A loaf of sourdough is like £9. Oh, it's size. disgusting. Like, the prices. I oh, know. But they're doing so well. There's always They're always busy. Anyway. Um, <laughs> um, this has now turned into a business podcast. <laughs> Sponsored by get imagine we got sponsored spo- I, by I will change my tune. Oh, me listen, I'm not a above bite per episode. I will be a hypocritical slag for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, now to call Wimbledon Village a privilege area would be an understatement. The driveways are home to sports cars and luxury utility vehicles, so you can imagine I have very unvent for walks home. I rarely see anyone on the trip about uh, on the trip about it. I rarely see anyone on the trip apart from the odd older couple perhaps walking home after a late dinner party or even a person walking their dog the neighbourhood is quiet and it gets to bed early <coughs> and that night <clears throat> that night was just like the others initially I'd gotten off the bus at the war memorial well, I see. I know this route so well I'm actually I don't there know where that is. I'm walking with this person <coughs> I know where that is. It's Why right have you been there so much? Uh, because obviously when I lived in Tooting, I'd oh, go yeah. for a little bougie sandwich. Um, as I do, that's my life. I do love a sandwich, Anna. I think sandwiches are amazing. <coughs> sandwiches are the best thing. Aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> They're amazing. They're the best They're food. They're amazing. But I hate Subway. Oh, Subway can <coughs> fuck itself. Subway can suck and my I- hairy root. <laughs> I hate Subway. <laughs> I hate Subway. <laughs> Why do people insist? I completely agree. <coughs> Subway is we, so I, I'm disgusting. sure we've talked about this I in this pod have. box before. But uh, it's getting it's getting worse. The price is going up. The quality How's is going, going down. Never in. Harry goes quite a lot. <sighs> no. The cookies Harry. are shit. Everything the about cookies. it. The cook. The cookies. <laughs> okay. I did like him. Um, what's her name then? Didn't I? What's her name? Like the guys are trying to kill me. At least uh, oh, Jennifer yeah. Coolidge. You had to, your Coolidge is spot on. Um, I'd gotten off the bus at the War Memorial, walked through the village centre, and turned onto the Ridgeway. My phone's batteries had died somewhere between Wandsworth and Southfield, so I had to do the walk without music. My usual practice was to walk along and look at the houses, try and guess what the people that lived in the houses would be like. Fast car, business types, SUV and toys still in the front yard, larger family, you know, that kind of thing. I was playing my game and I decided to have a cigarette, so I stopped. Delicious. I was searching for my lighter and looking around when I noticed that I was not the only one on the street. Now this was unusual but hardly alarming. What was strange, however, was that the person wasn't the sort I'd grown used to seeing. It was a young lady. She appeared to be drunk or tired, perhaps? Probably me. I lit my cigarette (coughs) and paused for a second. Just a quick second to judge if she'd be capable of making it home by herself. Or perhaps maybe she would need me uh, to see if I could call someone for her. Right. It was at this point I realised that she was crying. I started to walk over to her to make sure she was all right. She stopped walking immediately, frozen. I noticed she was in some sort of Halloween costume. A schoolgirl, in fact, and as I got closer... (coughs) I'm so sorry. (coughs) Come on. 
I noticed that she was in some sort of Halloween costume, a schoolgirl, in fact. And as I got closer, I began to realise she was, in fact, around the age of 15 or 16. Oh, no. She was deathly white. Her makeup must have been professionally done or she'd spent an incredibly long time preparing it. I began to decide that perhaps her friends had made fun of her costume and she'd run off from whatever party she'd been at, drunk and upset. I began to start feeling a bit unnerved when I noticed that she was staring directly at me as I approached. I can assure you that in a city the size of London, we have an unspoken rule of avoiding eye contact with strangers at all costs. It was at this point I assumed she was under the influence of something other than alcohol, and I decided to be a bit more cautious. I stopped about four or five, four or five feet away from her, and I spoke to her. Are you okay? You seem a little upset. Are you in any sort of trouble? Nothing apart from that stare. Have you had a little bit too much to drink? Maybe something to smoke? Yeah, I know, right? Hallucinogens when I see them. <laughs> yeah, right. I know hallucinogens when I see them. <coughs> Still nothing. Do you need a taxi home? Do you remember where you live? At this, the girl began to cry again, but this time she was absolutely wailing. I could feel her raw sense of despair. I actually flinched at the sound. It was positively unbearable. She was dancing on the border of hysterics, perhaps even putting one foot along the line to see what would happen. I was stunned. I wanted to console her and run in equal measures. I wanted to comfort her and, and chastise her at the same time. All I managed was a meek, why are you crying? She must have heard me somehow because she began to draw herself back from the edge of what can only be described as a complete breakdown. She was still heaving and sobbing, but once again she brought her eyes up to mine and said very softly, Because you're going to die. Uh, no. Now, I've been unfortunate enough to witness death firsthand on more than one occasion. Suffice to say, these events had always left me with a lot to think about, and in fact, I'd come to terms with my own mortality quite early in life. It struck me that perhaps, like too many of us had, this young lady had someone quite close to her die recently. Perhaps she was going through the same dark realisations that follow being in the company of death. <laughs> she thinks she's just, like, pissed and like, this doesn't even yeah, matter, we're all going to die! Exactly, yeah. The same thoughts that can keep children up at night and the pews full at churches. I wanted to let her know that everything would be fine and that death was simply a part of life. All I managed, however, was a slightly incredulous, I know. At this, she seemed slightly taken aback, almost angry. She responded, you are going to die and he is going to kill you. Alarms went off in my head. I began to feel more than a little threatened. I decided right there and then that talking this girl down from whatever bad high she was on was no longer my responsibility. Had not the venerable Hunter S. Thompson himself warned us of the dangers of underestimating the ability of a drug to take control of the person? Good luck, I said, and with that I turned and began to walk away. After about five steps, I quickly looked back to see her still standing there. She put her head down and began to audibly sob again. I quickened my pace and shortly had walked out along a natural bend in the road, leaving her out of sight. I'd been left agitated. I remember putting my headphones back in my ears and trying to listen to music from my phone, only to remember it was out of power still. I was still two miles away from home, but at the pace I was walking, I was confident I could cover the ground in less than 20 minutes. No less than two minutes later was when I first heard the shouting. It was a man's voice and layered within it was an excruciating sense of malice and rage. I'm coming for you. I couldn't quite place where the oh, voice Jesus. had come from, but it seemed as though he was at some distance behind me, on the same road, possibly from where the girl had been. I immediately realised that I was to be the victim of some sort of Halloween prank. Right. I didn't, however, slow down. I imagined that this was the point when I was supposed to get scared and begin to run, and I was determined not to play along. I would have fucking legged it. Yeah, I would have left. And I'd be like, no. Again, I probably wouldn't have spoke to the girl in the first place, to be honest. I'm too yeah. selfish. <laughs> Again, the bah. <laughs> Bad bitch. Again, the man yelled, yet this time it seemed to come from significantly closer. I hate you. Now, the voice seemed to have come from somewhere quite close mm. behind me. That is to say, at that volume, I'd have expected to see the man addressing me, but I was still very much alone on the street. I was also walking quite fast, so the person yelling at me must have run quite fast. But I didn't hear any footsteps. There was obviously more than one prankster, and they'd hidden along points in the street. I quickly decided to be, rather than a poor sport, and cut off the main road down Thornton Road at the Swan Pub. I hate to admit that their practical joke had got the better of me and I did not want to see what they had in store for me next. 
I made it to the front of the second house on the street when that terrible voice shouted at me again. You are going to die. The time the voice... This time, the voice seemed to have come from the entrance of the street less than 80 feet away, perhaps a last chance at scaring me before I disappeared into the darker side streets. Since these streets were darker, I decided that I would lose no pride in starting to jog down the hill. I knew it was probably all fun and games, but the ferocity of the shouting left me worried that I could in fact be dealing with a real maniac. True, it would have been interesting to be part of the most elaborate mugging I'd ever heard of, but that voice just left me the impression of true hatred. I didn't want to meet the person, or people rather, that could mimic and channel such malignant feelings at will. I'd made it to the curve where Thornton Road becomes Thornton Road, when all of a sudden, I will kill you. This time, the same voice seemed to be directly to my right. He must have been hidden behind the fence of some house, or perhaps even hidden within the house. I had obviously walked right into their trap. I broke into a sprint at this point, pride be damned. I began to run quite fast and then faster, straight downhill. At this point, I was actually beginning to panic. My mind was playing terrible tricks on me. It seemed as though the voice was all around me, constantly yelling, constantly screaming. Up ahead was the main road, Warple Road to be precise. Well lit, busy, I could hail a cab and be home in minutes. But the voices, the immensity, I hate you. You coward, die, die. Every second, all around me, the adrenaline must have been heightening my every sense. I admit I was scared and it seemed as though for some reason that terrible voice was booming off every surface on the street. It felt as though I was simultaneously running away and into that mad rage. The words felt like gusts of terrible hot wind pushing its venomous anger at me. I couldn't take it anymore. The voice seemed to make me share that same intense anger. I thought to myself, am I the one shouting? And I felt like a victim. I wanted to kill the people that were playing this mad trick on me. I felt the hatred. Time to die, coward. I decided I have to give up. In one quick moment, I decided I would stop running as fast as I could and have a cigarette and wait for these people to show themselves. Come what may, I needed answer. I need answers and a smoke. I quickly stopped my run and I spun around. The car beeped as it raced past exactly where I would have run to had I not stopped that exact moment. Okay, it's not scary. Um, I felt its air pocket ruffle the back of my hair as it sped past. In my blind panic, I had run past the sidewalk of the main road and onto the actual road. I'd avoided running blindly into the road and being run down by inches. I looked up the road where I'd come from. Darkness. Silence. Whoever had been up there was now gone. I lit my cigarette and took a few moments to calm down. Smoking had saved my life that day, friends. <laughs> this is a this is a smoking advert, actually. Um, I am we are being all sponsored by Marlborough. For it, <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> Imagine at the end, <laughs> like Marlborough Reds. <laughs> we'll save your life, and we'll save you from traffic accidents yeah. uh, or being trafficked. <laughs> Well, I didn't see that twist coming. Um, <laughs> smoking has saved my life that day, friends. I went home after that. Nothing more happened to me. But as I was standing there trying to calm down, working through the panic and adrenaline, I seemed to remember I felt like I heard a soft whisper. Perhaps, perhaps just my imagination. I thought I heard a girl's voice softly saying, Not such a coward after all. Oh. Mm. What does that mean? Okay. What does that end mean? I love that it's your story. You're like, what? What? What does it mean? Does it mean because like they turned around to face what was going? Oh, on? I see. Is it? Do you think? Yeah, I think so. in the end they were like, "Fuck it, I'm going to stand my ground." Well, I actually think whoever wrote juicy, it just thought they needed cigarette. to have a good ending. <laughs> it wasn't about cigarettes <laughs> and chose to go down. I think it's probably that. Yeah, but I can relate to that completely because even if someone was about to murder me, I think I'd be like, Do "You know what? I'm just going to sick." Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like the cup of tea. It's your comfort thing, isn't it? Okay, um, are you ready for Creep of the Week? Creep of the Week. 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 Do you think we're going to get taken to court for that? That's okay, isn't it? No, it's fine. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, yeah, another thing that Hannah and Susie do, just throw it <laughs> onto the carpet. Have a cigarette and relax. Have a cigarette. <laughs> Do you know what? Get yourself a little mold, bruh. <laughs> Get yourself a little silk cop, mama. 
and oh, relax. This is a horrible podcast for a. <laughs> it's not a health and wellness this is one. Not let's a be child's <laughs> podcast. Well, also, we talk about getting pissed. Have a sigging. Have an po- yeah. Having bend. Having uh, doing like fucking facelifts. <laughs> Get needled, get drunk. And also and do mushrooms sick. because fantastic. <laughs> uh, hey guys, I just want to say I love the pod and I love both of you. Uh, that's very kind, thank you. We love you too. The following is a few stories I heard from my mum, uncles and nan growing up. My mum had said that when she was younger, she, my nan, my uncles and her were sat in the living room. My nan would look at the living room door and say, come in, Fred. The door handle would then go down, the door would swing open, but nobody was there. This is in the same house as the previous story. My nan had met a new partner and was decorating my uncle's bedroom for him. He put the standing knife. Standing knife or Stanley knife? Stanley. It's got to be Stanley, hasn't it? He put the Stanley knife down on the wallpaper paste table and when he turned around to grab it again, it was gone. He then asked if my uncles were messing about, but he could hear giggling, but nobody was in the house. They had all gone out. Missing knife. That's fucking petrifying. <laughs> Before all of this, my nan was moving out of her house, and when she looked back at the house, she heard someone say, Come back, Heather. I hope her name's Heather. Otherwise, I don't understand. P.S. I once saw a ghost of a cat <gasps> in my no. grave. Cat. <laughs> Is it cat? Is that cat? <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh so much. I once saw a ghost of a cat in my great uncle's living room. Living room, I assume. I once heard it. Oh. Let me start that again. I once saw a ghost of a cat in my great uncle's living room whilst my cousin was talking to a man who had died in the house. We were probably about four at the time. Love you both. Oh, cute. I'm not going to say who it is because they haven't said, but I can say it. So, but that is gorge. Thank you so much. So we've got Fred, we've got knives going missing. Come back, Heather. Come back, Heather. I like the name Heather. I used to know someone at school called Heather and she was a twat. Oh. You know when that kind of ruins Bad your... Um, personalities can ruin a name sometimes. Was she a twat or is that unfair? I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, sorry. If, listening if now. you're listening, Heather. <laughs> I don't mean you. It was the other one. Just two, so <laughs> they will never know. Ha! <laughs> ha! <laughs> <laughs> wow. What a trickster. <laughs> what a what trickster. What a twat. Okay. So, um, welcome to the section of uh, this is uh, yeah. <laughs> give yourself goosebumps. Really Little beware. Comic. You choose the scare. Hannah, I'm going to give you some adventure. I'm going to give you a choice. So you look choose. at that bloke on the front. Well, he has been through some times. Super lizard. Super. Is that a super lizard? This is called Little Comic Shop of Horrors, and I found this in Margate. Um, oh yeah. For let me just quickly check the price. One pound. Probably less. Ninety five p. Is it on the back? Uh, actually, it's not. Oh yeah, gift aid. One pound. One pound. You cannot go wrong. What a guess. You cannot. Go I wrong. don't know why you didn't buy more. Well, yeah, it's just because I didn't have the room. Right. Anyway, so here we go. <laughs> She's broken. <laughs> Sorry. She's had a stroke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Beware. No. Oh! <laughs> Do not read this book from beginning to end. Oh, you're gonna read the Otherwise fucking you're like fucking idiot. You're gonna read the publishing list. <laughs> hey, you never noticed that comic book shop before. It doesn't say book, it says comic shop, but I added book. Yeah. It's kind of dusty, but man, does it have great comics. If you check out the books on the spinner rack, you're spun into a comic book universe. Which superhero do you want to be? Will the supervillains destroy you or worse? Will you end up as an ink blot? Mm. If you follow the horror story... Actually, this is giving it all away. All right, let's go. Yeah, Chapter I was one. confused about that. But... Shush. <laughs> shut the fuck shut up. The f- I love saying that. Shut, shut the fuck, fuck up. up. I just like saying, shut up. Shut up. Shut, shut up now. Fuck. Shut up. I thought after school clubs were supposed to be fun. Mm, me you too. Grumble. <laughs> You're such a grumble. Well, actually, I didn't. I thought they were always supposed to be horrific. This is you. You are this character. Oh. Get into it. You love comic books, and a comic club sounded cool, but it's run by Horace Grumboucher. Oh my! What a name! The dullest. You can't have a kid surname of Grumboucher and then think, Do you know what? I'm going to call my child a, a lovely, Horace. silky name, Horace. <laughs> How could someone make a subject like comics Horace. boring? Horace manages. He clicks his slide projector to a picture of a comic book cover. 
Here's the first issue starring Super Doer. <laughs> he drones. Today, it's worth nearly $200,000. Fuck me. Click. And here's the first appearance of Ballistic Bug. This comic goes for nearly 20000 As if any kid in this club can afford that, you think. The projector clicks again and a horror comic appears on the screen. Excellent. Oh, you love horror. But Horace can even make horror dull. Horror Horace. This issue of the seller of scary stories went for sixteen hundred dollars, he lectures. Oh. An ugly face sneers at you from the comic book cover. Yuck, it looks like a rotten pumpkin with warts. You turn away and notice the classroom clock. Oh, how did it get so late? You run outside in time to see a horrible sight. Oh no! You groan. What? What's wrong? Find out on page two. <sighs> The school bus is already a block away. It left without you. Oh, oh hang on. Where are they? I thought they after were at school. school. Yeah, but after school clubs at school. Oh, thanks oh, a lot, right. Horace. You growl. Because of his boring lecture, now you have to walk home. If you follow the same route as the bus, you won't get home for hours. You decide you'd better try a shortcut, even though it means going through a part of town you've never seen before. Mm. You walk and walk along your shortcut. With every step you take, your book bag gets heavier. The area you're cutting through looks a little weird. The buildings are all old and dingy. The shop huddle, the shops huddle together as if they're holding each other up. And the stuff in the windows is very weird. You pass a clothes shop that seems to be selling Halloween costumes, even though Halloween is months away. And those dolls in that toy shop window, they look like vampires. You're relieved when you spot a shop for vacuum cleaners. Huh, that's normal, you think. And next to it, oh, hey, a comic shop. Want to visit? Go to page three. You step inside. The comic shop is dimly lit. You can barely make out the comics and spinning racks. Beyond in deeper shadows are tables with row and rows of boxes. There are the back issues. Row and rows. Row after row of boxes. These are the back issues where collectors look for treasures. Mm. The owner stands behind a cash register. He looks familiar, but... He has round face and warts. He has, he has round face. <laughs> Are you cat? <laughs> Are you cat? But he has face. <laughs> he looks familiar with his round face and warts, but you can't place him. He grunts when he sees you. Ugh, kids. Well, he's... It's like working a fucking comic book yeah, shop who does then? he expect to come in and buy comics? As you walk past him, the shop owner calls out, Leave your bag up there! You scowl. Why is he treating you like a thief? You think about leaving, but you'd like to have a rest from walking. And besides, you really want to check out the comics. Mm. Strolling round the racks, you notice the latest issue of Major Disaster. You bought it just a week ago. This guy has a sticker on it for half price. Oh. Walking a little faster, you start picking up the comic. You start picking. Oh there! You start picking up comic books. Doesn't the owner know what these things are worth? The deeper into the shop you go, the darker it gets. A pair of bookcases block your way, but there's a little space between them. You see light coming through the crack. Oh. You squeeze between the bookcases into an open area. A dusty lit bulb. <laughs> bulb. A dusty light bulb dangles from the ceiling. In its dim glow, you make out another spinning rack full of comics. A sign taped to the top of the rack says, You think this is a library? Look, but don't touch, or you'll be sorry. Oh. You peer at the comics on the rack. Whoa, that's the issue of Ballistic Bug from Horace's slideshow. The comic is marked for two bucks. Great. And up there on the top rack is is that the incredibly expensive copy of Super Doer? But then you notice something else. Well, Two hundred grand. Oh. This kid's gonna be rich. Uh, you notice something else. A doorway beyond the rack. Oh. Metal stairs lead downwards to the basement. You guess. Mm. An arrow-shaped sign points to the stairway. It reads, "Horror." There's also a tattered sign on the open door. You try to make out the faded letters. It seems to say. No admittance. Trespasses will be glomped. <laughs> that's, a, ah, that's a great word. Glomped. Don't glomp for me. <laughs> Argentina. <laughs> um. <laughs> Don't glomp for me, Argentina. <laughs> All the truth is I never do. <laughs> that's like the remake. <laughs> I'll throw my glomp days. Um, glomped, what's that? You don't really care. Yeah. All you care about is making a tough decision. Should you take a closer look at the rack? <laughs> <laughs> Lads! Or should you go down to the horror section? Oh. 
If you check out the rack, turn to page 12. If you go downstairs, turn to page 51. I, my gut tells me to go to horror, but I'm not going to. I'm going to check out the racks. Oh, lovely. Because I think my gut will take me to my death. Fine. Okay. Shall we carry that on next week? <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> so Hannah's going to check out the rack. Join I'm going to check. Week. Join us next week for me checking out some racks. Yeah, what's changed there? Do you know what I mean? That's non I'm stop. Um, okay, welcome to You Get Haunted. So no, we, we get, get haunted. haunted, so you <laughs> don't have to. And this week, we've got the Himalayan rock salt, and we're going to use it to try and contact Vasilis. Vasilis. Varel. Var- oh, was that his name? Varel. Varel. Going to try and contact Varel. The problem is we're in a different place. Yeah, but Varel might have got attached to us. I really hope not. Why? Um, do you want a little ghost following you around? I wouldn't mind. Okay. A little, little undead pet. I'd like to do a little, um, I'd like to do a little... Should we turn the lights off, can we? Yeah, can we turn the lights off? Uh, Where's the light switch? I have no clue where the lights are. No, don't worry about it. We have no Let's idea. Let's leave it. Like, if we, imagine if we just turned everything off and deleted everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's it, Brian. Yeah, I think it's best we don't. Okay, do you want to touch the salt? I'm going to... Really get into the zone, Susie. It's about here. Get in. Why? Because I think you can see it. Maybe you can see it. Okay. Not really. If you want to move your mic stand, maybe you'll put it. Oh. There we go. Oh, God. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Ah, look at that. That's great. That's perfect. Okay. I'm just going to do one because my nails are really long. Okay. Get into the get into the mood, Susie. Okay. We're gonna we're doing a seance. Clear your mind. We did a seance the other night, didn't we? So we know mm. what to do. So clear your mind. Clear your mind. Yeah. Stop thinking about the fact that you want to cook spaghetti bolognese for your dinner later. Mm. No, no, stop it. Get, oh. I know you like a spag bowl. I love a spag. Get get rid of the idea in your head. Move it away. Get, clear your mind. Yeah, yeah. Clear your mind. You need to make room. Today is the day before Halloween, and today and tomorrow are. The times when the veil between the dead and the living is at its thinnest. So we might be able to contact mm. for real. Clear your mind, because the veil is too thin. Wait for the wait for them to come. Stop. Wait for them to come. They're gonna take over. For real, if you're here, give us a song. Please feel free to take over Susie's body for the rest of her life. Not no. No. For a bit. <laughs> for, a, for a bit. You can, no, Do it. not also, don't take over my... A couple of what minutes. What are you on about? Uh, don't minutes. take over my... What? No, it can... I, Possess you. This no, is a seance. I'm asking a spirit to be here, not in me. No, but this is the thing. We can't know. You I can't. don't want to be possessed. A seance isn't about that. If, if, for real, if you feel like you would get more out of being in Susie's body for a bit, doesn't have to be forever. Feel free to use her as your vessel. Fucking hell. Come on, you have to be prepared. You haven't asked me if I'm okay with that. I assume. For real, if you're around, if you fancy a bit of Hannah, get in. Yeah, fine. Any of us. Step in. Any of us. Or. But I had a big breakfast, so there's not much space in me at the can you? Can you just hold on a second? Let's see if he's here and give us a sign for real. Yeah, and a sign would be taking over your body. No, or a tap. What? There a isn't knock. a tap. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, put on tap. Turn on the tap, Varel. Okay, ready? Okay, Varel. Varel, if you're here, make a noise. Come on, Varel. I don't know what's noise and what's train. That's train. What's train? A what cat was cat. <laughs> Is that cat? Come on, Varel. Varel, if you're here. Varel, please, we're not here to harm you. Come on, Varel. I don't know if we've got his name. He was evil. Remember? Hang on. Is anyone here? (laughs) 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 That laugh is... It's me, Varel! No. (laughs) Okay, thank you so much for joining the seance. Um, (laughs) That was the fastest seance. We'll be back in Spotify next week. Oh, it's been so nice. And then um, we're going to find out what Hannah sees when she goes to the rack. Yeah. Um, And yeah, thanks for being our hunt. Thank you so much. Love you very much. See you next week. Bye, 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 bye. See you later.